friends, welcome to the Art Corner. I am one of your co-hosts, Anusha Sayed. And I am another one of your co-hosts, Vicky Tai. And today we are talking about online stores and how the heck to sell your work. This is really exciting. Um... <laughs> it's, a, it's a big topic. Like I, I feel like I've learned a lot of things this past year of running mm-hmm. my online store, like like by myself for the first time, and it's been it's been a roller coaster sort of journey. Mm-hmm. What about you, Anusha? What's sort of your take on the online store business? Um, I'm kind of exhausted by it. I wish I could just close <laughs> my store now. Um, oh I, my god! <laughs> I reopened it this past weekend for uh, like the Black Friday, whatever, and like mm-hmm. I had to like ship out maybe thirty orders, and like that just like took up my entire weekend. And yeah, I, yeah, I have like a bunch of orders that I need to pack up, but like I'm so lazy. <laughs> I forget that this takes a lot of work. So if you guys are interested in starting an online store, just know it's a lot of work. Like, cause I didn't, I didn't realize that before. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Like when you're first starting out, it's not as much work because you're still trying to like figure out the ropes and things. Mm-hmm. Right. But I feel like once you sort of like get into the flow, you know what you're doing and you can market yourself better. Mm-hmm. And so you might end up getting more traffic and that's when things like you really have to pay attention yeah. to how you manage your time because it can the work can pile up very quickly because mm-hmm. you were saying that with just 30 orders right it took you an entire just weekend. 30 orders that's a big order for me okay no no you, uh, <laughs> you didn't hear the rest of my sentence okay i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> okay so so what i was going to continue saying was like with just 30 orders it took you a weekend right oh, okay. to to complete all of that mm-hmm. and so like imagine if you had gotten more like how much longer that would have taken yeah. you to you know package everything up and stuff like that but this is all from like a very very like finished kind of perspective i think maybe we should sort of like talk back to basics oh yeah yeah that's true and and um, start from there yeah okay let's let's talk a little bit about our uh experiences first uh vicky okay, how long yeah. have you had a store for or any kind of like platform for selling stuff yeah okay so i think officially it's it's been about close to a year now i that's it yeah yeah i really started taking my store seriously january of this year because that was when i had had finished my job at my at the animation studio I was working at and so I was like oh I'm self-employed now I have to figure out a way (laughs) to make money to pay my rent and my bills so that's when I really started hunkering down on that and I started out on Ticktail I believe Mm -hmm. that was the platform that was it was just easy to use really because I don't know how to code or anything like that so I wasn't comfortable making my own store so I just used Ticktail and then I've recently moved to Big Cartel because there was some weird stuff going on with TikTok charging fees that were just kind of unnecessary in my opinion. Mm-hmm. And I just felt like Big Cartel had a... Their fees just made more sense. Mm-hmm. I mean, <laughs> there's probably going to be fees that you have to pay. Yeah. With, with And we'll get into time. like the pros and cons yeah. of each storefront later on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, because like we both have different experiences with different ones um but yeah I'm really liking Big Cartel right now and it's good and I would say that my business has definitely really evolved over this past year and I feel like I've really started to get the hang of things but oh my gosh recently it was before Thanksgiving break I had my largest order ever it was how big it was close to 300 orders jeez Louise okay yeah and I was that week I basically became a ghost I I was a ghost I didn't like really go on social media or anything I was basically working non-stop I woke up in the morning I started packaging orders all the way until like 7 p.m so it was just like close to like 12 hours of work for an entire week doing all of that and sending it all out and it was very very stressful and very tiring and I felt like I was just a shell of a human being but <laughs> Of course, I am immensely grateful for all the orders oh, course, right. at, at the end of the day. I mean, like that that work is separate from that feeling that I have. But it can be a lot of work managing an online store. And I have definitely thought about how I would hire an assistant maybe to help me out with mm-hmm. things or, or something like that. So it's it's definitely continuing to evolve. Mm-hmm. 
at, at current time. Yeah. I'm very what about su- you? Yeah. I'm very surprised that you've only been doing it for a year because you seem like you're hmm. really established and like I have ordered stuff from you before. Like I got a bunch of Overwatch stickers one time and like hmm. you had like really cute packaging and your stickers were really good quality. Aww. I was like, oh, your stuff is really good. You look like you're a pro at this. And like I took a lot of like um, inspiration like uh, uh yeah I, I guess like i was inspired by like some of the aspects of like your packaging and like your website Aww. for like my own store because i was like oh mm-hmm. she knows what she's doing oh my god <laughs> i'm really glad it comes off that way because <laughs> if you were like i don't know if you just like saw me working on it day by day mm-hmm. you would understand that it's basically like a literal garbage dumpster oh. on fire like i have <laughs> no idea what the hell i'm doing i'm like uh how do i um package things i like, i literally <laughs> don't even know like what is what so oh that's interesting that it comes off as that yeah. way it's really okay. fun so, um, let me give you a little bit of my history so yes let's, let's hear it. see i um i think i was in my second year of college so that was uh let's see two oh geez four years ago boy i feel kind of old no no okay. <laughs> no four years ago no, okay. nothing wrong with being old yeah. There's nothing wrong okay with that. so four <laughs> years ago i heard of a little something called society six and uh, i was like uh, yeah so uh society six if you don't know it's like one of those and it was one of the first in its field of like a platform where you could um upload your artwork and they would um kind of you had the option of like making it into like t-shirts and mugs or like prints like you know regular prints or like other stuff and Mm -hmm. um they would do all of the manufacturing and shipping and all of that stuff and you would collect a percentage um so that appealed to me because when I was living in Switzerland, I didn't know how yeah. like postage or anything would have worked and shipping. And I was a kid. I didn't know taxes or <laughs> all of that kind of stuff. So right, that, right. that part appealed to me. And so I did that. And this was when Society6 had just started. So all they had was prints and t-shirts. And I think they had... uh phone covers now they have like bed sheets and right right and They're like shower and, curtains. yeah they, they've gone crazy they're like, out of control but yeah so I did that and I was quite into it um I just upload my stuff regularly but like as we'll discuss later society six is kind of uh you don't you don't get a lot of money from it unless you're really dedicated mm-hmm. and so I um kind of got into like oh maybe I can make my own stuff and so I had the idea of making jewelry out of my artwork so like um Ooh. you would get I would print out my artwork and then put it onto like a locket and like put like the glass thingy on top so it would be like a locket with like my art on it <gasps> that's so cute yeah it was really I cute. That. <laughs> it just it took a lot of work though and oh, I tried I selling those uh, it was kind of tough but that was my first foray into Etsy um and I did that I started doing prints and then I started doing um some pins and stuff and then uh stickers and then eventually um I was like about earlier this year I was like okay I love Etsy and all but like I feel like I could have a more professional website and so I'm using Squarespace for my online portfolio and they also have the option of having a um what do you call it a an online storefront? store yeah storefront yeah. Okay. and so because I like that aspect of like having like a Anusha say a dot com slash shop and I was like okay yeah. that looks a bit more professional than having an Etsy thingy so mm. I moved on to there and that's what I'm using now and uh it's I'm learning every day um mm. I change up my package once in a while there's one point where like I would uh do like really fancy cursive to write out addresses and that would take like 10 minutes each but I was like this is not worth the effort anymore um Mm -hmm. and and yeah making a lot of changes throughout the years and I'm I think I'm at a pretty good place now um yeah I think your website looks fantastic thank you thank you yeah (laughs) okay so I guess that's our history um so I guess oh my god can... Squarespace please sponsor us Squarespace please oh my god I'm obsessed <laughs> with Squarespace like guys I already rave about you enough like seriously if... <laughs> just let's get the sponsorship going on you already like are in every single podcast in the world why not just just choose us let's make this relationship happen yes <laughs> let's do this <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh boy. Okay. Uh, let's talk about storefronts, I guess, our different options. Yeah. Yeah. So like I had previously mentioned, and since you mentioned Society6, that actually makes me remember that I had used Society6 very, very briefly. Mm -hmm. And like you said, the, the payoff is very, very minimal. Yes. I, um, I think I like made like less than 10 bucks on oh, yeah. the time that I was there. Yeah. It's, um, it, it's not a lot, but, um, I think I'm trying to remember the timeline. So I did society six very, very briefly. Mm -hmm. And then I used store envy for a little bit, Ah, right. Okay. But I really didn't like their layout or anything. It just aesthetically wise, I'm very into my aesthetics. It was not pleasing. Mm -hmm. So I moved away from that. And now Ticktail is the yes. longest platform um, that I've like spent time with. And it's really, really useful. It's helpful, especially if you don't know how to code or anything like that, because they figure all of that out for you. They have like these templates that you can use and it's very easy to navigate, I would say. And setting up everything, there's steps and explanations for all of it. It's really good. And also it's free to use. If, if I remember correctly, they may have changed that now. Yes. But so what I recall from yeah. Ticktail is that it's mm -hmm. mostly free, but there are a lot of ads add-ons that you can purchase. Right, right. Um, There's the add-ons and also the fees that they charge with every sale. And I yes. know that they have this marketplace fee where if your item gets sold through their marketplace, then they take a 10% cut which can be quite a lot, especially when you add on PayPal fees or credit card fees or anything like that. So that, that can add up mm -hmm. and so, it's, it's a good starter platform, I would yeah, say. Yeah. yeah. I think it's one of, if we're grouping up into categories, you've got like Redbubble and Society6 and other right, variations right, yeah. of those, then in, those are like, let's, okay, let's do it step by step. So, okay, okay, yeah. <laughs> okay, Society6 and Redbubble. So they are the type where, like, you upload your artwork and, like, the company they manufacture for you and do the shipping. Yeah. So those are the pros. Like, you don't have to do any extra work. The cons are that um, they take a large percentage of your cut. So, like, it's very hard to make a lot of money from it. Like, I... If you buy a phone case from Society6 that costs 20 bucks, I would get $1.20 from it, yeah. which is like yeah. ridiculous. Minimal. I know yeah. there are like some artists on those websites who like make a huge living from it, but they have yeah, like yeah. their own brand, I guess. And like, mm -hmm. you know, like they really put a lot of effort into like making everything look consistent. Like, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you're really invested and like you don't have a lot of time for like, you know, to do all the packaging and stuff, I would suggest that. Uh, I don't mm -hmm. like if you're starting out, that's like a good starting. Point. I agree because there's there's no upfront cost for you. Yes. Basically. There's no risk. Yeah. You just you upload your artwork and they take care of everything else for you. So mm -hmm. it's very hands off and it can be sort of like a, a multiple income stream for you in, in the future. But it's. It's, I wouldn't recommend it as a primary no. income stream because it can be very sort of unreliable. And also, as we've discussed, the percentages are very, um, not in your favor. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Um, okay. Then moving on to the second group, which would be, uh, Store Envy, Etsy, and Ticktail. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ticktail, in my opinion, is the most professional looking out of all three of them. Um, yeah. cause you've got like all of those templates. Like I feel like the, those store, f um, when you have like your shop set up, like it can look really nice and professional. True. True. Yeah. Um, it, it looks really clean. Um, mm -hmm. and it kind of looks like its own website. Whereas like, if you're looking at Etsy, you're looking at like an Etsy website. Right. Right. Not yeah. like it's a very store much part website. of Etsy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So that's one thing that I didn't like about Etsy. Um, mm -hmm. so with Store Envy, you can also customize your storefront to look however you want, but there are limitations. Like it'll still look kind of like Store Envy, but also you can does, yeah. you can change the way it looks. Whereas like with Etsy, you can't. There's like no changing anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know that you you have some experience with Etsy, yes, right? And could you talk a little bit about how? I think there's like a fee you yes. have to pay. Um, okay. I believe it's. Um, so every time you have a, you want to upload a new listing, a, you have to pay 20 cents if you want to have like a new thing. Um, and then they take, I believe, uh, how much do they take? An estimate, maybe like 
Was, is it between like five and ten percent? Okay, okay. <laughs> I don't want to give any false information. Right, right. <laughs> okay, so it costs twenty cents to publish a listing in the marketplace, and the listing lasts for four months or until the item is sold, and then you have to renew it. And then if the item sells, there's a three point five percent transaction fee. Okay. And it does how, not how include does the yeah. shipping. Yeah. Got it. Got it. How did that work out for you? Pretty well. I feel like I didn't lose too much in terms of like transaction fees. I really, I really like Etsy, and it's um as ugly as it is, it's um, <laughs> uh, it's really easy to use. And what I like best about Etsy is that it is the most common online store in that like you have a lot of people who are searching on it constantly like it's one thing to be like okay you can find my stuff here and like you promote it yourself but then you have like randos who are like oh i want some cute flowery artwork and then they're googling it up on etsy and then they find you and then so i had like a lot of sales from just like randos looking for stuff yeah, no, that that's totally true, though, because, like, I don't even have an Etsy, Etsy account, but I would mm-hmm. always be like, hmm, I should look on Etsy to, like, yeah. find something. Mm-hmm. And, like, same with my boyfriend. He doesn't, like, run an online store or anything like that, yeah. but he's like, oh, yeah, if you're looking for something artsy, just mm-hmm. go on Etsy. Exactly, yeah. Wait, it kind of rhymes. Is that, was that, like, artsy, your Etsy? intention? Oh, yeah. interesting, interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> which I, I know that, like, you can search for stuff on Store and V and Ticktail, but it's not as big. As the yeah, Etsy not community. as well known. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so a step up then from those platforms where you don't really For have dis- to be if sure. you want discoverability, then go on Etsy. Right, right. And then like, yeah, so the next step would be where you have to pay maybe like a monthly plan yes. for a monthly plan or something like that. Yeah. So that's the third stage and those would include uh Shopify? Is that yeah, yeah, I think they do charge a fee. Yeah, Shopify and Squarespace, and I'm thinking if there's any others, but those... Oh, big Cartel. Big yeah, cartel. Big Cartel. Those, yeah. Are, those are the other ones. And so those, so you have like the big customization, you can look, you can make it look however you want, like a proper website, but you do have to, um, you know, pay that big money. Yeah, I, I do want to specify, I think that if you want to use Big Cartel and your five items or less, you don't have to pay yeah. any sort of fee. I think that's what it is. But if you want to sell anything more than five items, then you got to pay that uh-huh. fee. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's, um, but even though you do have to pay, I really like the options because like you said, it's just down to like customizability mm-hmm. at that point and yeah. you can make it look however you want it to look and yeah. it's it's very manageable as well uh, how, how is squarespace like what, girl um, let me tell you okay yes <laughs> let me hear it <laughs> this episode is not sponsored by squarespace but i wish, wish it was um <laughs> okay so uh when i had decided that etsy was enough for me i was trying to decide between shopify and squarespace mm-hmm. and so shopify was really good in that like you had a it was designed for a if you wanted an online store it's it's for like those pros they right, have like right. all of like you can do your market analysis and your um business stuff and uh, <laughs> business. <laughs> business the big business um yes. I, I don't know how to describe it but and they've got like all of those big features on it yeah. um and then squarespace doesn't have as many of those features but um They've got like really nice looking templates, which I really like because like I, again, like I like you, I don't know how to code. I don't know that HTML except for like that minimal amount of HTML that I use yeah. on Neopets.com. But like how to bold text. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Italics and yes, all very good stuff. Um, so if you, um, 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 um. Squarespace. Squarespace. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So I... I personally really like it because like the reason that I ended up choosing at the end is because like I um since I'm already using it for my portfolio I didn't have to pay like too much extra because like okay so here are the fees for each one okay um so before I had like a personal plan for my portfolio which was like 16 well which was 12 bucks a month Mm -hmm. and then making that into a business one Yes. Would have been 18 bucks. And I was like, okay, so that's just five bucks extra. But if oh, I wanted yeah. to go into Shopify, then that would have been like, I don't, I don't know, I'm just pulling a number out, but like mm-hmm. 
maybe if it was like 10 bucks a month and I'd just be paying like uh, yeah, probably. for two different websites. And I was like, no, I don't want to do that. So I decided on Squarespace in the end, just so like I didn't have to pay so much. Yeah. Isn't it nice having everything just like in one place? Yeah, together? it yeah. is. It is. Um, it just feels really clean. Um, but yeah, I think those are my talking points. Uh, that's my experience. I don't know if we're missing out any other storefronts. Um, well, those are the ones that we have yes. uh, yeah. experience with. That's our yeah. experience, anyway. Okay, low-key, you're making me want to, like, convert to Squarespace. <laughs> that sounds really nice to, like, have everything in one place. <laughs> um, it's okay. I will say that, like, Shopify does feel a lot cleaner to use. Squarespace, the interface is a little bit messy and, like, not as customizable because, like, it, when you're using the templates, like, there are some things that I want to change, but, like, you're not allowed to, like, change the HTML or whatever. Mm-hmm. So if, like, there's something I want to change, then it's like, oh, no, you can't do that. Sorry. But I think you can <laughs> with Shopify. I don't know. Mm-hmm. There's all these small nuances with yes. each one. Yeah. Just, exactly. like, we, we've shared our experience. Obviously, you should, you know, like, try them out for yourself oh, yeah, as for well sure. and see which one just works with you, floats your boat, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. So I think, yeah, we've talked plenty about storefronts. Yeah. Okay. We're good with that. Um, so let's talk <laughs> about cash money. Yes. Let's talk about that cheese, that cheddar. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, to receive payment digitally, it's what I know is pretty much one of two ways. It's PayPal and credit card. Yes. Right? Stripe is another one, which I have heard people use. And I think that you need Stripe if you're using Store Envy. And mm-hmm. it gives me the option of Stripe on Squarespace as well. I I actually use Stripe as oh. well. Okay. That's wait, is it just for receiving payments or can you also pay with Stripe? Um I don't have I've only ever received payments yeah. with it, I think. Yeah. But um I would say that uh it's very easy to use. Stripe is very, very easy to use. There are fees associated with both platforms. Yes. Um just is because it they 2%? have two percent? I, I think that that sounds correct. Yeah. But but don't quote me on it. Uh-huh. Um. But um. Yeah. They they have to collect fees because they process all the payments for you. Uh-huh. So that just keep that in mind that when you make a sale, it's not going to be that number. Uh-huh. Um. After it goes through uh, their services. Uh-huh. That's right. Yeah. Um. I would s- say that like if there is an option in your website to accept payment through paypal like if like it gives a default they like to add in your credit card information but if it also gives you the option to do paypal as well do it because like if if i'm buying something and it doesn't give me the option of paypal i don't buy it because it's like i don't want to mm. i want i don't want to go and f- go downstairs find my bag and get <laughs> my credit card like at least with my paypal i know my password and i just put it in like don't give me that extra step of like you know typing in my credit card number and like i'm too mm-hmm. lazy for that yeah, no, it, it is really nice having that option to pay with PayPal Convenient. because, yeah, exactly. It's just, it's fast. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's really, really fast. You can just connect um, through the website to PayPal and just take care of that. You don't yes. have to like, yeah, no other phishing of wallets involves. Exactly. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Okay. So um, now that you know which storefront you're going to use, let's say, I don't know if you're using Society6 or you're deciding to go straight to Etsy or something. Um, the thing is, start small. (laughs) Um, Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's the same as, like, if you were planning on doing a convention. Um, Mm -hmm. you don't want to immediately be like, okay, I'm going to go out and I'm going to order, like, 100 pins and, like, (laughs) uh, 40 prints. And, like, I'm going to have, like, 11 different, like, kinds of prints. And I'm also Mm going to do stickers right now. And I'm also going to, like, do all of this really big stuff. Just... Hold your horses. <laughs> That's really good it, advice. Slow, slow it down a little bit. Just because, like, um, a lot of when you're starting out your store, it is a lot of there's going to be a lot of trial and error involved. There's going to be like, yeah. um, mm-hmm. you don't know what's going to sell at this point, and you don't. It's e- it's really easy to like bite off more than you can chew. So like, Definitely. when you're starting off, um, start off with prints. Um, and maybe have like a few different types of prints um, and start from there. And then like slowly you can build your way up. Mm-hmm. 
I know that I've seen like this question a lot on forums where people ask like, oh, should I have like a lot of different sizes for each print that I'm going to offer? I would say that's really not that necessary. I think like you, what you offer is what people will look for. So, you know, if you decide that you only want to offer one size, then people will most likely be fine with that. If you go all out with a bunch of different sizes, one, it gets really confusing. Two, you have to buy a lot of different shipping equipment, Mm -hmm. which can get very expensive, especially you don't want that when you're first starting out. And three, it's just, um, what was I going to say? Like, like you just might end up with a lot of overstock yeah, because that you don't certain know what to do sizes, with. yeah, certain sizes might sell better than others, and then you're just left with a pile of random exactly. <laughs> like prints. Yeah, yeah. Oh my yeah. god, yeah, that reminds me. of this. So, like the first and only convention that I did, I didn't table independently. I just kind of like um, tacked on to like somebody okay, else's sure. table. I bought a shit ton of prints oh. and like barely any of them sold. And like after the convention, I just had this enormous stack in my room and it was like my shame stack. I was like, That's Oh, really funny. This, this is so <laughs> sad. Like, and it was like when I was, this is back when I was in like middle or high school. Oh. So like I, I had like no idea what the F I was doing. And like, I spent way too much money. Yeah. So learn from my mistake. Yeah, <laughs> Mm-hmm. That is really good Jeez. advice. Uh, which, okay, which also kind of connects to um, when you're selling prints, do you want to order them online or print from home? So, Vicky, mm-hmm. which, what do you do? I order online always. Why? It's easy. <laughs> I'm too lazy to, like, learn how to, you know, use a really nice printer mm-hmm. and um, learn about different paper types. It's just... It's not something that I'm particularly interested in. And also, I feel like I would spend too much time on it otherwise. Mm -hmm. Um, So I'd really rather just leave it to people who are professionals with that kind of stuff and have them take care of it. How do you know how much to order? I, like you said, just start small, really. Um, Start with numbers that you can manage. And if you have more or less demand, just change your orders based on that, really. It's like you said, it's all a matter of trial and error and just figuring out what works for you and the audience that you have. Do you ever time. order something and or like do you ever get worried that like you'll, you'll order something and like it doesn't sell? Yeah, definitely. I think every time I place an order, I have that exact worry <laughs> oh my god if you like ask my boyfriend about it he's <laughs> like yeah she like talks about this all the time I'm just like oh, I don't know if like this one will sell or anything but the way I kind of decide what to order is just like based on people's feedback on social media you know mm-hmm. if they said like they want it as a print then I will take that into consideration and also sometimes I'll just print things that I personally want right. to see as prints so it's kind of like that balance between like listening to your audience's feedback and just kind of like going with your gut, you know, and deciding what will work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, So that's really interesting because I prefer printing at home. Ooh, yes. Tell us, tell us about it. Okay. So um, I do order online sometimes, but that's usually for conventions and, Mm -hmm. um, you know, like, and I, I'll order online for convenience sake because then like, I don't have to like sit at my printer and print out like, a hundred, you know, whatever things and like Mm -hmm. I'll waste ink and, you know, so I'll do it for those occasions. But if I am doing it for my online store, then I'll definitely print from home. Uh, And this is because um, a lot of the time I don't know what's going to sell. And so I'll, especially like I'll put up a new listing and then I'll be like, okay, so I don't want to order like 10 prints or whatever. And like, what if none of them sell? Because I'm looking at like, I have like a box next to me of prints which have not sold i (laughs) Mm -hmm, um mm -hmm. they're they're like three different print designs which like have literally never sold at all and like i just like sometimes i just put them into my orders and just like give them away for free because i honestly don't know what to do with them so at Mm -hmm. least with like when i print from home i only need to do one at a time so like if i get an order it's like okay i'm just gonna print that up now and i'm putting and i'm sending it off i don't Ah. need to like you know i only print as much as i need yeah, yeah, that's really smart. Oh my gosh, you can, you can really sort of like control the the production exactly, of everything. Yeah. So I don't have to worry about like overstock and um. Mm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. 
And so that was a lot of trial and error of uh, figuring out the kind of paper and stuff. Just for your information, I use a um, a Canon Pixma. Um, actually, let me go see. It's actually in my uh, work study space, so I'll just go and quickly see what it's called. Mm-hmm. Okay. I ran back. It's called an MD6620. <laughs> this is Canon. And I got it on sale. It was for like a hundred bucks, I think. Um, and it's an inkjet printer. And I got this. Okay, so just a little helpful <laughs> hint for you guys. Uh, ink For like inkjet printers, which are like the nicer kind of printers, um, they require a lot more ink. Like usually with like normal mm. laser ink laser jet i don't know laser printers like something like that (laughs) yeah you'll have like a thing for black ink and a thing for color ink like you know Mm. you got the two but with this you have six you'll have two different blacks and then you'll have one for blue red yellow and something else i think so is it like cyan magenta and yellow yeah 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 okay yeah and then you you'll have like all of these like separate ones and so they are if you get them like from the store uh they cost like uh i think ba, 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 ba. they cost like 60 bucks Woo! which is a lot of money but oh dang yeah but listen up i uh found them on amazon it's like i found like a knockoff brand which is like Ooh. for um 30 bucks i get them all times four Oh, dang. And it works just the same. Oh, heck yeah. So uh, I highly recommend that. You just search for like, search for it on Amazon. It's just like the Canon inkjet, whatever. Just make sure it's compatible with your printer. And I think it's from Uline or something. I don't know. But you'll mm-hmm. feel, it's the one that's super cheap. You'll find it. <laughs> I knew she's got the hookup. <laughs> yeah, if I can, I try to minimize my costs wherever I can. Um and that that's helps. another good piece of advice yeah um yeah as for paper i started with uh watercolor paper and then i did like cardstock and i tried it a bunch of different types that and eventually i have like this one textured canvas paper which Ooh. i really enjoy and if you ever buy something from my store you'll find out what it looks like um that's a <laughs> hit for you guys buy from my store yeah so do that <laughs> Yeah, you um you sent me a print for Valentine's Day this oh, year, yes. and I gotta say that print looks really nice. Thank you, thank you very much. Yes. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um. So let's see. So those are the pros and cons of do you want to print at home or not? But like mm-hmm. the this just brings you back to start small. So I I mean you can order online if you want, whatever is more convenient for you. Hmm. Yeah. Um. Then what else? What else? After you, yeah. So after you start with prints, I guess like you could go into making stickers because like those are one of those things which you can also make at home. Like you get like a sticker sheet from true, Staples true. and like you cut them yourselves, which mm-hmm. I've done in the past. I don't have the patience for it now. I just yeah, order me my too. Online. It's it's so much work having to cut it all by hand. <laughs> so for oh okay, um, I am a believer that um. I like to share where I like to share my manufacturers. Oh my god, I was actually going to ask you about this because like, okay, okay, yeah, sorry, go on. I know some on, people are yeah. really secretive about it and like right, I, right, I don't yeah. care. Like it's not like you guys are going to like, you know, like use like steal it for, your art. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um you're going to use it for your own benefit and like um I I believe you guys will make great things and like um yeah, I don't know. Okay, so for prints, I like using cat print, C-A-T-P-R-I-N-T. Um, that is one of the most common ones. Um, they give you like a bunch of different types of papers, paper choices and sizes that you can do. Um, do you like using cat print as well? Yeah, I would say they're my main printer. And also, it's got cat in the title <laughs> and they support animal shelters. So oh, like, cute. what the heck? It's like perfect. That's really nice. Yeah. <laughs> oh, another thing I really like about them is that the packaging that they send uh, your prints in is all recyclable or biodegradable, which I'm like, yes, we need to help the environment yeah. as, as much as we can. So that is kudos to them. Mm-hmm. Very good. That's really good. Um, I don't know of any other um, 
print printers. I mean, like, yeah, for um, online ones, I'm not sure, but you should also look into printing locally if you have like a local print shop nearby. Mm, um, mm-hmm. Again, for like convenience sake, because there are a lot of times where like with cat print, I'll order way too late and like they won't come in time for a convention. And also, their yeah. shipping fees are quite a bit. I don't like it's that. It's true. It it can be very expensive, especially if you need it uh faster than just like the standard yeah. shipping. It gets up there. It's it's mm-hmm. pretty expensive. And yeah. like I know that cat print is also on the more expensive side in terms of like online printers. Yeah. Because like I've heard people like talk about it in comparison to other ones and they're like, oh, but like cat print's just so expensive. And like I recognize that, but I also just really stand by their quality, so I am personally willing to to, to pay that amount. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, for stickers, um, I in the past I've used Sticker App and Sticker Mule, mm-hmm. um, and I've had like like good experiences with both. I heard one of them has a lot of controversy, but I don't know which one, so I don't want to like you know, accidentally call think, out the wrong one. I um, think it might be Sticker Mule. I read, I read like somebody's tweet on Twitter talking mm. about like the, the CEO is like a supporter of Ooh, boy. our president. And uh, yeah, Ooh. so it's like a little bit questionable in terms okay. of like, so if you want to take into account, you know, like where your money is going mm. in terms of like supporting uh, political parties and just like agendas and morality really when yeah. it comes down to it then you could definitely look into that and but I, I think that would require like quite a big um upheaval in terms of like everything that you purchase from yeah, that's true. you know what I mean so I mean like that's entirely personal decision so we're not here to make that decision for you mm-hmm. yeah. yeah yeah buy from whatever you want like we're, we're not your moms no you you're an adult, you can make that choice. (laughs) Um, So pins and buttons. Mm -hmm. Have you ever made buttons and pins? I've made pins before. I used get lapel pins and they were okay. Um, They're the only company I've ever had experience with, so I don't have anything to compare it to, Mm -hmm. but it was an okay experience. There was some like issues with communication and payment and it just kind of like soured the experience for me a little bit. Um, Okay. Yeah, I've never made buttons, though, so I have no idea how to do that. <laughs> I know there are a lot of people who will make their own buttons. Like, they have, like, a button maker. Yeah, yeah. Um, That is an investment. But those are something that – those are, like, a big seller in, like, conventions and stuff because, like, you sell them for a dollar or, like, a dollar fifty, and, like, mm-hmm. they're, like, good s- small, small babies, like, small purchases. <laughs> Yeah, I love buying buttons when I go to conventions. It's just fun. And you can, like, stick it on your lanyard and stuff. Yeah. And it's like, ooh, look at all these, like, pretty things I have. <laughs> For pins, I've used both. I first you used Made by Cooper, which I quite liked. Um, They mm-hmm. did a pretty good job. And then I used Zap Creatives. And Zap Creatives is one of those pretty big ones. They are very famous for their charms. They make, like, acrylic mm. charms and stuff. Yeah. Um, and their pins were fine. I, I quite like them. Um, my only complaint would be since they are based in the UK, shipping is mm. a bit much. Mm-hmm. If you're but if you're in the, the US, UK. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. Yeah, if you're in the UK, then go for it. Um, <laughs> yeah, I haven't made patches. Neither have I. I've wanted, I've wanted to for a while, though. Yeah, it looks really cool, but I have no idea how. <laughs> um, I know some of those, those sites you mentioned also offer patches. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. I think made by Cooper. Yeah, so. Um, I've never made any <laughs> clothing, though I've wanted to as well. Me too. Oh my god. I feel, oh, clothing is such a conundrum. I have no idea where to start. Like, I yeah. I did a little bit of research back in the summer, just like trying to look among different companies and stuff like that, but it's honestly a headache. And it's a really like, big investment. Yeah, exactly. And also, you have to take into account like sizing. Mm-hmm. Like that's when sizing. Really yeah, sizing is that. the biggest thing because you want to be inclusive, but also it's like I'm don't know how many of each of these is going to sell because it's not just that you're buying ten t-shirts. You have to buy like five of each size or something. Mm-hmm. It's like mm-hmm. it's it's tough. It can get tricky. Yeah. So neither of us have 
experience no. with it. But maybe we will in the future. We will figure it out. Yes. One day. Yes. Maybe we'll have a guest one day who's like a pro at this stuff. And there's someone I have in mind, but this is a problem for a future day. Yes. And they will be like, yes, I have all <laughs> the knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, I, I know that you've also made bags before. Is that correct? Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. Okay. So, I, <laughs> yeah, I made... um tote bags um mm -hmm. and so those are screen printed and i got those done by sugar bomb which is a local toronto screen printing company so they do ship abroad but like that was kind of like a special request because i moved to the states and i was like hey could you ship this here please <laughs> and um they did pretty fast shipping though i think it was like within a few days um oh, cool. so i really did like them they um but I would suggest looking into, like, if you have, like, a local screen printer. I know some people who screen print their own stuff, which is bananas. Oh, my God. Yeah, uh, what's, that's pro. What's her name? Or they go by Haikala. Oh, okay. Okay. Ha yeah. H-E-I-K-A-L-A. -A. Uh, they, they do their own stuff. Yeah. They're short. It's, like, all, oh. like, a really inky style. And it's, like, really pretty. But, like, um, I asked her earlier and like um they do like their own uh she took like a screen printing class and like um, oh cool and like she has posted up videos um online of like her classes and stuff which is really cool uh -huh. um and it does feel like it's very convenient because again you can like print as much as you need and you can do your own designs yeah. but it's you need to learn how to do it first and i've always right. wanted to do like a workshop of it and like learn how to do it but it's ugh, one day one day yeah oh my god that sounds really nice I wonder if, like, oh my god, we should, like, take a class together. Yeah, we we Okay, first of all, we don't live anywhere near each I other, know. just so y'all know. That makes me really upset. I know, but, like, maybe, maybe one day one we day. will learn. Because yes. <laughs> um, then, like, it would kind of solve, if you were making clothes, it would solve that issue as well. Because then, like, you would just mm -hmm. buy the sizes as needed, and then you screen print yourself, and then yeah. you got it. Exactly, and it just like cuts out all of the guesswork and mm -hmm. the whole like, uh, how many of these do I buy? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. Um. Okay, so I think those are all the stuff that I've made. Stickers. Oh, books, 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 books. Oh yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. So, um, if you ever want to make an art book or a zine or something in the future, um, uh, here are some things. Here are some different things you need to know. First, you got to decide if you want to do, um, shoot, what is it called? Uh, what, what, what are the names of the binding? Perf saddle stitch? Yeah, Wait. saddle stitch or perfect. Okay. Yeah. Wait, what's perfect? So, okay, so saddle, <laughs> saddle stitch is when you have like, um, it kind of, it's like the cheaper kind of binding. It's like kind of the thing that you'd find for like pamphlets or like your usual zines. And okay. it's just like you fold up the papers in half and then you kind of like stitch it up because that's where it comes yeah. from, saddle stitch. Um, perfect binding is like when you have like, um, you fold up the papers, but like you, oh, okay, saddle stitch can also be stapled together, like oh. down the middle. Okay, okay, yeah. Okay, perfect binding is when like you'll fold the papers together, but like they'll, instead of, how do I explain it? <laughs> It'll be, f you have to have enough pages so that like you, when you paste the cover at the back, it becomes flat at the back. Like the mm -hmm. binding is going to look flat, kind of like a regular Ooh. book would look. Mm -hmm. um, so the pros and cons of each one would be that saddle stitch is cheaper. Like it's basically yeah. like staples and stuff, mm -hmm. but it doesn't look as professional just because mm -hmm. like it's not, it doesn't have that like nice thick you know binding I let's say it, let's fine. say it's got a nice homemade feel to it it does it does yes <laughs> mm -hmm. and that's something you can actually do at home by yourself if you wanted to what holy shit i never knew that yeah yeah um you literally could like if you printed out your pages on like a nice cardstock or like a glossy yeah. thick paper and then you just staple it together you have it oh my god but you have to make sure everything like, yeah the, <laughs> you have to make sure um the way your pages are numbered and like ordered mm -hmm. um ugh. all makes sense yeah they have to make sense you just google it you'll find out you'll yeah yeah you'll it's, find it's a whole tutorial. process yeah it's, yeah it's pretty it's easy enough to do yeah. um so uh with perfect binding that's what i've used for my art books so far um i did saddle stitch for my first inktober which was nice mm -hmm. enough um and then 
all of my books have been done by Northprint, which I super highly recommend. I love Northprint. They are I've never heard of them before. I love them. They are based in <laughs> Canada, though. Like the first time I used them, they also had an office in America. Like it's it. It was like, do you want to go to northprint.ca or .com? And I'm like, oh, .ca because I'm oh. in Canada. But like this time mm-hmm. around, it only gave me the option of CA, so I don't know why. But anyway, yeah. Um, the guy who runs it, he's really cool, and he's like on online like twenty four seven. Like I could send him a message at like oh Sunday God. at three a.m. and he'll be like, hey, Anusha, what's going on? Let me help you out. <laughs> Um, so really good, (laughs) really good service and, um, Mm. price wise, it's pretty good. And, uh, it's like one day delivery. Damn. Wait, in Canada? So this was, no, this, what? No, I was, so this time around for CTN, I printed out like 50 books, I believe. No, 75. And, uh, uh, he was like, okay, I'm going to ship these from Ontario. And these are going to go to Texas. And I was like, okay, so CTN is in two weeks. I hope these arrive in time. The next day, they were at my door. Are you effing? How much did you have to pay for shipping? That's crazy. Shipping? I don't even think it was that much. What the And it was like a big box as well. Dude. I think shipping was included. This is like blowing my mind right now. So I'm a really big fan of Northern. Give them your money. They're really cool. Damn. Yeah. I'm like, you you also converted. You're like converting me to like everything. (laughs) You're like the Squarespace, the North print. Yeah. um, My experience with printing zines, I've only started doing it this year. And I use RA Comics Direct. Mm -hmm. And they're really good if you want fast printing. The quality is not the best by any means. It's... um, it's it's okay. I would right. say that it's okay. But if you want it like fast, like for a convention or something mm-hmm. like that, or it's just a like, yeah, just anything like that, then they're really good to use, and their customer service is really excellent. They're very very helpful. Yeah. So yeah, just sort of like layer options there. Mm-hmm. Um. So the these are the ones that I've used so far. I for my Inktober now that I remember. So that was Saddle Stitch, and I got that done from a local printer. Um, Mm -hmm. where I just googled like book printing in Mississauga because that's where I lived and um, Mm -hmm. I found them and they were really nice and they got the job done so I would also suggest like looking into like local stuff because again you could don't need to pay for shipping because you can just like pick it up and Mm -hmm. um, you can feel the paper and you get an idea of like the sizes and like they might have examples of how it could look of like their past Mm, books mm -hmm. and like paper is like a big thing for me like to make sure they're like because like they'll ask you like um if you're getting it done online or whatever like uh the cover is going to be two point and the inside is going to be eight pounds or i don't know and it's like Mm, mm -hmm. i don't know what that means like these are just (laughs) numbers yeah yeah so it's nice being able to like feel it in real life and be like ah okay this is this is how it's gonna look Definitely. Like, I, I would also, like, suggest checking out local printers. Yeah. And, like, I would push for it more. I just had, like, a bad personal experience with it. I remember there was this, like, print job that I wanted to get done. And so I was, like, searching around for local printers. And then I emailed this guy. And he was just totally unprofessional about it. Mm-hmm. Like, he was really rude in the email. And he, like, I would ask him questions. And he would literally not respond to them. <laughs> like do you want customers or not like I'm really confused about this so like I I didn't really do so well with my um, that particular local printer but I've heard really really great stories from other people Mm -hmm. who are like yeah like this mom and pop shop they like really help me out and you know like I go there regularly so they know what I need and stuff Mm -hmm. like that maybe you could build a relationship with one of your local businesses for sure yeah always support Mm -hmm. your local businesses Mm -hmm. I agree I agree So uh, before we move on to the next point, uh, it seems that it's been an hour and 15 minutes. I think we might have to cut this into like... like we're going to do two parts. Okay. So I guess we'll leave it at that. Um, Yeah. Okay. And then, okay, guys, thank you for listening and stay tuned for like in what, a month for the next part? Yeah. Oh, God. Sorry, guys. Okay. (laughs) We'll see you around. Yeah, see you. Thank you for listening to The Art Corner. You can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at The Art Corner Pod or send us any questions or comments at theartcornerpodcast at gmail.com. You can also find all of our episodes on workbook.com slash artcorner.
Our theme music was made by the amazing Louis Zong, and you can follow him at Everyday Louis. You can also follow Anusha on Twitter at Foxville underscore art and follow Vicky at Vicky Sai. Please review and subscribe to our podcast. We'd greatly appreciate it. Thanks again and see you next time.